Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Moltec Packaging Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Nirmal Bang Equities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Navalkund from Nirmal Bang Equities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Uh, thanks, Anjay. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Nirmal Bang Institutional Equities, I welcome you all to Multic Packaging Limited 1Q SY23 Earnings Conference Call. We have with us uh, Mr. Lakshman Rao, the Chairman and Managing Director of the company, along with the entire finance team at Multic. Without further ado, I would request uh, Lakshman sir to start with his opening uh, comments, post which we will open the floor for Q&A. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for your uh, participation in our uh, I'm very happy to inform you uh, that in all segments, the Multic has shown uh, Five percent increase in sales, and that is up by eighty percent. Ladies and gentlemen, please be on hold. Uh, we cannot hear uh, uh, the management speaking at this point of time. Uh, we'll just quickly get back to you. Please give me a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, the management line is reconnected. Uh, please go ahead, sir. Uh, dear all participants, thank you very much for your interest in uh, our quarterly results conference. I'm very glad to inform you that all segments have done wonderful in this quarter, reaching some historical volumes, and uh, that uh, enabled us to uh, uh, achieve 50% volume growth in sales, and PAT is up by 80%. And... Uh, this is, uh, though it is compared with the COVID affected last uh, last year quarter, even uh, compared to the figures of 18, 19, and 19, 20, these numbers have been substantially better. So the overall uh, top line is uh, more than 207 crores as against uh, 133 crores last year in terms of rupee terms. That is up by 55%. Uh, but in the, even in the volume terms, uh, numbers have gone up less than 6,000 tons in uh, Q1 last year to more than 9,000 tons, and this is the first time in the history of a company. In a quarter, we achieved more than 9,000 tons. The previous figure is less than 8,000 tons, so or around 8,000 tons, and this year, uh, 8,400 was the highest in the like, Q4, 
and we achieved 9,040 tons of sales and 9,150 tons of uh, production, uh, which is historically high in our company's performance. This has become possible because of a uh, huge increase in demand in our uh, uh, food and FMCG as expected. But also one surprising element is lubricant business also grew up very much in this quarter uh, due to new brand of DEF uh, brand, brand of loops being introduced in the country. Uh, it's been introduced a year ago, but uh, more and more numbers have been accumulated towards small tech in the last few months. And that resulted in a big jump in sales for lubricant industry as well. So uh, going forward, uh, another new announcement or new decision taken by the company is to set up a second plant at Daman because the Daman plant is now full and uh, uh, there were some issues of getting additional construction permits due to the huge highway we have in front of our factory. So Moltec uh, company has decided to set up a new plant in a new land and uh, very soon uh, we'll be going ahead with the plan there because a lot of clients in the western region belong to food and FMCG are expecting us to be nearer to them in the west and it also makes uh, both commercial and uh, transportation sense to be closer to the clients. So the board has decided to set up a plant, the second plant in Daman uh, during the financial year itself or probably it will spill into the beginning of uh, next financial year. Uh, that is a new announcement in terms of uh, CapEx. And other uh, capacity plans that were announced at the time of QIP are going on well in time. The major plant of IBM products, uh, injection blow molded products coming up at Sultanpur <coughs> will be operational in the beginning of uh, next year. And uh, our pilot plant to produce uh, OTC products and even sampling of Karma products would be starting in uh, September or October of this year itself. And I'm also glad to inform you for the entire pilot plant uh, uh, capacity, we have received orders from one of the major uh, FMCG companies in the country for a OTC product, uh, which will completely occupy the capacity of the IBM uh, pilot project. So this has been confirmed and the molds are now under development. And I'm also glad to inform you that the FMCG companies uh, are now on the back on track to develop new new products in uh, IML, which they almost suspended for last two years of COVID impact. And now they are opening up the doors and at least three projects are confirmed to go ahead and another uh, fourth product uh, project is being decided in this uh, next few weeks. So that way the food and FMCG new brand development is also started uh, which has been kind of suspended for the last two years, uh, which might augur well for us in our uh, IML uh, food and FMCG segments. So uh, other projects are all uh, on time, uh, going on uh, as for plans, and we hope to achieve our ambitious uh, uh, target in this year. Uh, and also uh, one uh, major announcement is, uh, as expected uh, at the time of QIP, we mentioned to you that 250 crores of CapEx is planned for the next two and a half to three years. And this year itself, the company has laid out plans to invest 125 crores, uh, plus or minus 5%, uh, to enhance various capacities, uh, set up new plant at Daman, maybe start new plant construction at Kanpur, uh, and complete the mainly the Sultanpur uh, Pharma project, a case of buildings and the main uh, <coughs> missionary would be completed. And uh, we are doubling our IML label printing capacity and steps have been taken to make sure that's also in the, on the anvil before the next season starts in January. And we also doubled, almost doubled, if not doubled, the tool room capacity where we used to make four to five molds a month. Uh, it will be enhanced to seven to eight mo uh, molds a month starting by January 23. So these uh, plans are all uh, keeping us very busy. But uh, we foresee that this kind of investments are required to meet the growing demand for our products. So now I leave the floor open for question and answers. Uh, back to the coordinator. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets for asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The 
first question is from the line of Ravi Navedi from Navedi Investments. Please go ahead. Jay Lakshman Ravji, thank you very much for a nice result. Sir, you are super genius. One, my request, kindly preserve money for expansion and capex and do not give big dividend because the equity raising cost is too much high in compared to giving the dividend. You have raised the equity by QIB and uh, that is our costlier impact on the company and company need uh, and shareholder need to pay taxes on that so our request please preserve the money for capex expansion for the in the company and sir how now much will be net profit is quarter one due to increase in raw but how much uh, will be net profit uh, rise due to raw material increase or finished cost increase in quarter one. See, as I always told you, uh, raw material price increase or decrease will have only marginal impact on our profitability. Because right. we pass on the raw material impact on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis to our clients. So whatever is in the Q4 raw material average price will be applied while invoicing in the Q1 of this year. Sometimes, April pricing is applied in May, May pricing is applied to June, depending upon the client relations. Major clients, uh, it is quarterly, but uh, small and medium-sized clients, it's on a monthly basis. But whenever the price of raw material is going up, we will be bearing for a couple of months or for a month or two, we'll be bearing the cost impact. Similarly, when the raw material prices are coming down, we will enjoy the price advantage for a couple of months before passing on to the clients. So. I wouldn't uh, consider that as a big impact. Maybe an, ex an average uh, one to two rupees per kg would be the impact going up. Uh, similarly, uh, one to two rupees advantage when the price is coming down. But this time, the swing being very high, like raw metal price went up from almost 119 rupees in uh, December or 116 in January to almost 139 in April. And then it is now on the downtrend. Last two months from 133 in April, it's now around 121, even 118 rupees now in July. So in a downward cycle, we will be gaining a couple of rupees more in the EBITDA. In a upward cycle, we'll be losing a couple of rupees from the EBITDA. Right. Okay. 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 And one my request to please consider do not raise equity always. <laughs> We'll take your advice, but uh, uh, we also uh, have our own thought process. Uh, behind yes, that. yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Omkar Hadkar from Mirabilis Investment Trust. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, congratulations on a very good uh, quarter. Sir, my question was on what's the uh, lead segment. Uh, uh, and Mr. Comment, you mentioned some new brand has been introduced. If you can share any, if it is uh, from an existing client or any new client has been introduced. And secondly, I saw in your list of clients, uh, the PSU is also in the lead segment. Just wanted to know how is their uptake and how much proportion do they contribute to our lead segment. Your first question is not clear, Mr. Omkar. Uh, regarding the PSU, they have started picking up volumes. Uh, BPCL is the only company where we have some uh, But apart from PSUs, uh, ExxonMobil and uh, generally all the DEF brands are causing uh, growth in the uh, loop sector. What is your first question? Yeah, my first question was you mentioned some new brand has been introduced in the loop side. So. Oh, that, what, is a, is it that is a new brand of lubricant uh, companies have introduced about a year ago, and their numbers are shooting up uh, due to various advantages that lube has against uh, ordinary lubricants, uh, especially okay. for uh, some diesel engines and CNG engines. So that numbers okay. have uh, contributed handsomely in this quarter. We okay. gained major numbers from Gulf and uh, Valvoline and Shell. Uh, these three major companies have... Uh, Okay. Sales, and that is uh, one of the reasons why there is a shoot up in the loops uh, sales. 
talking and and what about uh, when uh, in terms of the sustainability of these uh, volumes of this new segment do you foresee this to be uh, to be a you know recurring feature your voice is not very clear i mean can you speak? sorry i was saying uh, what do you in you know, in terms of the uh, sustainability of these uh, volumes from this new segment or this new product do you think this will continue going forward yes yes yeah obviously it will continue there may be little dip in the monsoon month for lubricants but okay. once the brands are there in the market for some particular range of engines as long as okay. the engines are there these uh, loops are required understood understood sir uh so my second question is uh, on the ibm side you have mentioned there is a pilot uh, now project that has been going uh is it a feasible uh, project because you know you have mentioned there is you are putting up a capacity for 2000 uh, tons but uh, this pilot project is it uh, kind of a feasible project or is it a small one to begin with no 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 the pilot project is with a four mission uh, project uh, having capacity to produce about uh, Four to five crore bottles per annum, and okay. uh, we now have almost four to five crores uh, commitment from one of the OTC products. So the value-wise, okay. that will be in the region of eight to ten crores. So okay. it is not very small, but at the same time, it is not a huge uh, pilot project. Uh, from this, the next major project at Sultanpur will be having about four times capacity to start with, uh, sure. but it can be expanded by adding more and more machines. so the first pilot project of uh, close to 500 tons per annum would be completely operational from october onwards that is about 40 tons per month but that's our okay. first beginning into ibm and it's a good beginning because uh, right from the day one we'll have almost uh, 80 to 90% capacity occupied and this will give oh. us an opportunity to showcase our abilities in ibm to our clients as well as new pharma clients and uh, hopefully but as i explained all the time Pharma will start contributing numbers only from the year 23-24 because it has okay. long time gestation period for clearances, stability tests, and other uh, products. However, other processes. But however, we'll continue to take opportunities from food and beverage industry and what is the source for uh, medicines uh, packaging because there the compliance and time taken is much shorter. And sir, my one uh, final question is on the uh, you you have not mentioned uh, in your presentation also, and I don't know any comments. What is happening on the pump side? I mean, uh, you have set up the capacities, but the uptake was uh, not uh, as per our you know expectations. So what is happening there? Yeah, pump side uh, we continue to have uh, average uh, performance only. About one and a half to two million pumps, as against a capacity of about six to seven million, uh, is being uh, engaged. as i told in the last uh, commentary of last uh, quarter also uh, hmm. the beauty of uh, one good thing about this uh, uh, pump division is all the six machines that are kept for pump uh, manufacturing can also be used for all our thin wall products so okay. we are not keeping any of the machines idle only part of the investment on the molds which are meant for pump are only partially utilized to the extent of 20% of capacity utilization Uh, as i explained wipro who has committed us 2 and a half to 3 million pieces per month is presently picking up hardly 700 to 800000 that 7 to 8 lakh pieces a month and uh, until okay. they set up their plant in hyderabad which is uh, postponed to end of this year uh, they okay. volume won't pick up but we are still trying we are adding small small clients here and there and uh, even okay. export opportunity in malaysian wipro we are uh, exploring so we hope that at least next year it will be above 50% capacity utilization okay okay so okay. i'll come back if i have more questions thank you so much thank you thank you next question is from the line of bhargav puddadev from kotak mutual funds please go ahead yeah good afternoon sir and uh, thank you for the opportunity Uh, so in the press release, uh, there is a mention about uh, a few major uh, FMCG and food companies opening up the new IML product development activities. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on uh, this statement made in the press release? Yes, yeah, see companies like HCL, GSA, Procter and Gamble. So we can't hear you actually. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Companies like HCL, PNG, GSK, Arun Ice Cream. 
uh, Amul, all these uh, companies were uh, generally out of developing any new concepts or packaging in the last two years because of COVID and uncertainties in the market. So now we have seen that in the last three, four months, some of them have started releasing uh, their clearances to go ahead with the new product development with IML. And uh, in fact, three projects are under uh, almost getting ready by September, October. One is almost ready. Others maybe in the end of September will be going uh, commercial. Maybe in October it will start commercial supplies. And uh, fourth one is at the final stage. That is with, uh, again, one more MNC. And that may be decided uh, very any time now. So with these uh, four projects, uh, which I mentioned in the Q1, uh, Q4 results as a possibility, but now they are all confirmed, and they will be contributing in a full year about 40 crores in the food and FMCG segment. Uh, but this year, probably around 20, 25 crores we can expect in the remaining six, seven months of the year. Uh, these projects clearance have been obtained, uh, and uh, mold development is going on, and we hope to start supplies uh, some in September and some in October and November onwards. Okay. Uh, secondly, sir, any update on the QR code and IML venture, which uh, we were uh, sort of uh, uh, being very optimistic on? Sorry, what is that? Is there any update on the QR coded IML piece uh, where we were excited? Yeah, yeah. On the QR coded IML, now, tomorrow, actually today, our team is with Shell, Bharat Shell. Shell and uh, Valvoline and Gulf are uh, advanced stage, and probably one of them would be introducing very soon is our guess. Uh, Castrol is on the little back seat. They're still not allowing people, uh, outsiders, to come into their plants for trials and uh, setting up uh, systems. But uh, these three companies are open, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, have a breakthrough uh, uh, during uh, this quarter. And uh, no no breakthrough with any of these paint companies, right, as of now? Uh, as of now, actually, we are uh, not only increasing our capacity at Mysore and Vaijab for meeting Asian paints increasing demand, uh, but also we are uh, in talks with uh, Badger and also another new paint company for creating additional capacities for them in the north. So if uh, those things happen, uh, uh, the paint industry will continue to give us a good growth. In this quarter, we have seen 43% growth over the Q1 of last year. But Q1 of last year being not a great year, it is still amounts to more than uh, 10 to 12% uh, growth in a normal year. And this is expected to increase because Asian Paints has asked us to keep our capacities ready from July, August onwards. And we are almost there, and uh, we hope the numbers of uh, Asian Paint plants at Vaisag and Mysore to better uh, perform better starting from August because of the uh, festival season is starting. And uh, paint uh, sales peak in October, November during Diwali. So generally, companies start building up stocks from August onwards. And so just one clarification. So uh, in the last call, you had mentioned that uh, there is a pipeline of 40 crores additional revenue in uh, food and FMCG. So this uh, particular uh, uh, statement which you uh, gave out of HULP and Arun and Amul uh, looking at developing new packaging, is that the same part of the 40 crores of revenue which you were expecting this year additional? Yeah, they are the same. Now they are confirmed and uh, one additional uh, product is also added, which is under finalization now. Okay, okay. okay sir. Thank you for the clarification and all the way. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Hassan Muchale from Liberty Research and Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on a very good set of numbers. I just wanted to understand uh, the perspective on the export business. So how much percentage of total revenue uh, denotes to export business? And uh, uh, with this easing out in freight costs and container issues, are we seeing a substantial increase in uh, export business? The export business is looking up, but the freight cost has still not come to the normal level. 
what used to be about the 1 lakh rupees let us say for uh, dubai or uh, middle east is even now at around 1.8 lakhs uh, per uh, for a 40 feet container which used to be almost uh, which went up to even 3 lakhs per uh, container so it is hardly around 1 and 1/2 crore in this quarter but uh, going forward we have two three major uh, uh, inquiries and sample submissions for actually in the uh, exports to usa for the restaurant packs for the speed box packs and uh, even for uh, uh, no for this ili uh, and uh, what is that called do for do uh, packing so these uh, uh, trial orders uh, i mean just supplied in the month of june uh, june okay. july and we hope those numbers will increase considerably in the coming quarters but we don't expect volumes to shoot up beyond 10 12 crores per annum because of the limitations okay. of the freight okay okay another uh, the question is linked to this only uh, do you see any major impact of uh, potential recession in eurozone and the us or what you called as a mild recession see as of today uh, we are dependent only on indian uh, markets and indian uh, growth story and okay. as it is our demand growth is coming mainly from uh, replacement demand replacement of either glass or sachets or even uh, <clears throat> thin containers which are being getting banned uh, because of their thickness being very low containers which are used for curds one time use containers are really getting banned so more and more companies are shifting towards iml containers where we offer the economy but not as cheap as uh, sachets or uh, those uh, thermoform cups but because uh, of this ban on such items more and more companies are looking at iml packs if that happens uh, we can certainly see the iml growth to be robust uh, for next couple of years also okay so second question is uh, which are our key raw materials and the sourcing country so do we see any supply chain disruption going ahead our main raw material is polypropylene copolymer reliance is our major supplier few uh, particular grades which are required for you know very thin wall molding we import from uh, uh, dubai and uh, saudi very little quantities less than 5% okay okay so rest is domestically procured yeah yeah oh, okay thank you sir and uh, wish you very best of luck for uh, future quarter time thank you thank you next question is from the line of akshay kotari from envision capital please go ahead this is the starting of the what would be our volume growth this quarter this quarter the volume growth compared to the previous quarter was 51% okay okay compared and to q4 it is around 8% okay, okay. q4 of last year okay thanks a lot thank you next question is from the line of hitesh tunk from icic direct please go ahead uh thank you for the opportunity congratulations on the good set of numbers sir uh sir um, uh so uh, what kind of capacity uh, addition are we looking for for 23 and by the capex of 125 crore overall earlier we had around 44000 odd uh, metric tons of capacity right by the end of fy22 yeah uh, we hope the capacity will be expanded to 54000 uh, tons uh, with this addition because uh, part of the capex is going towards enhancing our tool room enhancing our label printing and die cutting and mm-hmm. also uh, adding new land at uh, daman uh, also so Uh, however the capacity will go up from 44000 to 54000 by end of this uh, fi okay and sir about this uh, the, uh, we have clocked nearly 9000 uh, metric tons of capacity for this quarter this is one of the highest so uh, uh, i mean can we take kind of this this kind of uh, volume uh, going forward for the rest of the year or uh, you see kind of blip uh, in between because of lower demand you know uh, in the fmcg or uh, or or any other segments 
see, typically the Q1 and Q4 are our best quarters in uh, Moltec uh, because Q2, the monsoon starts uh, heavily, which disrupts the transportation and thereby in general consumption patterns and also uh, some of the uh, frozen fruits and ice cream consumptions come down. But again, from Q3, the festival starts, festival season. So sometimes if the demand is too good, people start picking up in Q2 itself, especially paints. But uh, Q3 will be generally reasonably uh, just around uh, above average. And Q4 will be a really strong finish again because uh, all the public sector and also some of the companies wish to close on a brighter note and the consumption goes up in the, as the summer starts arriving in Feb March. So typically Q1 and Q4 would be uh, really good in terms of uh, volume growth. So we hope it will average at around 9,000 uh, per quarter. Okay, great. Uh, and so my next question, uh, uh, next question will be on the gross margin front. Uh, uh, though, uh, no, for, for on a per kg basis, we have we have improved on a Q and Q basis. Uh, but sir, I mean, uh, despite having a significant growth in the FMCG business and uh, uh, the customer additions, uh, uh, is it a kind of level do we maintain going forward, or do we see kind of improvement in this uh, uh, EBITDA per kg going forward? See, as I explained in my first question, answer to my first question, uh, the raw material price are now started coming down from May onwards. Uh, June also better. July it's come down considerably. And if the same trend goes uh, for next couple of months, the EBITDA margins will improve because, uh, as I said, there is a lag effect of about two to three months. So whatever is the, while the prices are going up, uh, we end up uh, supporting our clients because whatever material we purchase in that month, we will be still pricing two months uh, behind. Similarly, for uh, going forward when the price is coming down, uh, we will be able to command the same price levels for a couple of months, which is now happening. So hopefully it will at least stay around 42, 43 if uh, things go as for our plans, uh, if not uh, uh, worse. Last year we ended up with 41.8 for the 12 months. So this year probably we can aim around 43. Okay. Okay. And sir, uh, can you give us the volume breakup for segment wise, sir? And revenue also, if possible. Yeah, the volume breakup uh, uh, paint is around 49%. Uh, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. in the terms of cages, uh, paint is 53%, lube is 29%, uh, food and uh, Q pack together is around 18.1, 18.2. The volume, sir, right? It is the volume. And uh, about the value, sir? In the value, paint is 49, lube is 26.5. And 25.5 is uh, food and QPAC. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for the answering. Uh, I'll come in the queue if I have more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rahul Maheshwari from Ambit AMC. Please go ahead, sir. Mr. Rahul, please go ahead with your question. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, now you're audible. Um, excellent set of numbers, sir. Just two questions can you uh, give just now in the previous uh, question you answered about the uh, how lag is the pass-through that takes place. So can you give it an example like HUL, which is one of your FMCG uh, customer? So uh, how, whenever they order for the next repeated uh, purchase, uh, what is the pricing that is getting passed on? Uh, or uh, sometimes when the prices are going up, how much hit do you take and how much price frequent, uh, time frequency you pass it on? Can, that is the first question. Uh, uh, irrespective of or FMC. Uh, there's a break in your voice. Uh, can, can you t uh, tell the time frequency of passing on to uh, the price? Yeah, in most order? of the clients, uh, it is uh, quarterly or monthly. That means uh, some clients like uh, HVL also is quarterly. Yeah, Asian Paints is quarterly. Uh, Arun is monthly. So like that, Amul is monthly. 
So we have uh, different uh, arrangements with the different clients, and whatever is the price of, let's say, April 1st, will be applicable for one-month clients in May. And for three-month clients, whatever is the average of Jan, Feb, March, will be applicable for April, May, June. So, so that is how we have uh, agreements with uh, several clients. Uh, small and medium clients, we don't uh, pass on this kind of thing. We generally tend to take the immediate price rise. Uh, so there uh, we don't lose anything when uh, prices are going up. Uh, but many of our clients, uh, let's say, who contribute to 90% of our sale, uh, they are under either one month or three month uh, average. So for example, if uh, Jan Fib March average price is around 125 rupees, in the month of March, it went up to 140. So whatever material we buy even at 140, we supply to them at 125. But same count, the average of Jan Fib March is 125. Uh, April, May, June is let's say 120. We continue to charge them 125 only for three months. Yeah. And next three months, now that is July, August, September, now the prices are around 115, 112. So let's say these three months, the price goes at 112, but we'll still be charging them at 120, which is the average of April, May, June. So that way, when a downward trend, we gain. In a upward trend, we lose a bit. So similarly, it will get nullified over a period of time. Uh, I hope you understand the... Yeah. And and uh, which are the segments where on a monthly basis it is being cost? As you told, for quarterly is for paint, sexual, etc. But for monthly, which are the uh, segments? No, 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 of for paint. For some clients in the paint segment. For an Aerolac, Berger, Adza Noble, they are still under one month only. Only for Asian paints, it's quarterly. In the other FMCG, HUL is quarterly. Cadbury is quarterly. But uh, other clients like Arun and Amul, it is monthly. So it is different uh, depending upon their purchase formula and our, uh, you know, comfort with them. So we offer either one month or three months average. And and as you said, sir, uh, in the injection blow molding, already you have received the OPC order from the FNCG company. So in case if that uh, the capacity gets uh, uh, utilized in the next two three quarters itself. In case you have to do brownfield expansion, what further capex that will be required? Uh, because as we are seeing the kind of inquiries, as you said, uh, in every year or uh, nine month time period, you might go for a capex uh, in few of the uh, plants, wherever it is being required. So can you throw some light on the uh, capex part, uh, brownfield, how much it can be required? Yeah, now Sultanpur project, which is uh, basically we are major extra investment is on the land and building, mainly building, because it requires a pharmaceutical uh, qualification of uh, hygiene and uh, uh, cleanliness. Uh, that plant will be ready by November, December, there or max by January. And there we will be starting not only pharmaceutical IBM products, but also cosmetics, OTC counter products, so for example, I'm telling it's not that we have orders. Uh, for example, Ponds, Vaseline, Amultanjan, Gendobam, all these uh, products are nowadays uh, coming in uh, IBM. Earlier, the technology used was EBM. EBM means extrusion blow molding, which is a cheap technology, and the product finish is always compromised. In IBM, you get the beauty of injection molding and accuracy of injection molding at the same time, low weight and uh, reasonable pricing of blow molding. So with this uh, technology getting more and more prevalent, uh, we have decided to enter into IBM last year. And this pilot plant is getting filled with one order itself. But again, in Sultanpur, by end of December or January, we'll be adding another eight missions. So if the four missions are now getting busy, eight more missions will be added. And the Sultanpur plant is built uh, to house up to 20, 25 missions. The beauty of our uh, packaging line is we can always adopt and change gears from one to other. Like say, uh, from pharmaceutical, even the capacities are created by pharma, and if the pharma companies are taking longer time to give us clearances, instead of keeping the machines idle, we can run cosmetic products on it, or OTC medicine products on it, or even uh, food IBM products on it. You understand? So, so uh, as, and when, as and when the pharma line of food demand increases, we convert the whole thing into pharma and set up a, a additional area or 
traditional machinery for cosmetics and other products. Thereby, we'll be effectively utilizing the capacity rather than create capacity in the ideal that uh, for longer periods. Uh, but uh, except Sultan Tun and other facility are fungible, as you mentioned, uh, which can shift from pharma to uh, cosmetics or etc. See, even in injection molding, all the machines are fungible. Only molds become unique. So, okay. and typically in a project cost of 20 crores, mold will be hardly 10 to 12 crores. Even in the pumps case, which the other gentleman was asking, in the overall project of 12 crores, molds were around 2 crores. So, 10 to 15 percent of the cost is not so fungible, whereas the remaining 85 percent of the project, including land building and uh, machinery and auxiliaries, they are all fungible. And, and just last question is, uh, like, as a blended EBITDA per kg, uh, it's on a rise, but uh, can you give a, a, the difference between the paint versus the food and FMCG? Not a absolute number, but uh, how much difference can be there? Yeah, I can't give absolute number for our own business uh, reasons. Uh, in mention. Yeah, I'll just give you a rough idea. In paint and loops, uh, if the range is somewhere around 30 to 40, but depending upon the clients and depending upon their volumes, uh, food and FMCG it is somewhere around 80 to 90. And in IBM, ordinary products, it is again in the same range, 80 to 100. But in pharmaceutical IBM, the range could be as high as 180 to 200 rupees per kg. Okay. As and, and, and this uh, digital IML, how much it can add to? Uh, I know it's a, it's into the trial phase for paints or lubricant, uh, but uh, how much more it can add a value to the editor per kg? See, actually, we are waiting for the critical client entry into this because the QR code is still not fully understood by even big companies in our company. Some of them which understood have to go through not only changes and modifications on their filling lines, but also they have to add uh, on their websites and ERP some additional software features to effectively get the benefits of QR code. So they not only need clearances from their production side, but also from their IT and marketing functions. That is what is taking longer time. But all of them are excited about the prospect and the benefits what it derives. But, you know, till last year or beginning of this year, it was COVID. And now from, now one by one, people are coming forward and opening up to the idea. And I'm sure once it happens, probably, uh, now I don't want to give a time, but whenever it happens, it will certainly lead to a lot of companies shifting to QR code because of the sheer benefits it offers. Uh, how much accretion it can happen in case if it uh, goes from a normal IML to digital IML? See, I'm more than happy even if 10 to 20% accretion uh, comes through the QR code. Uh, but timelines, I don't want to guess now because uh, sure. as somebody commented, we have been thinking that will be a game changer. But uh, time-wise, I don't want to guess. But once it is getting adapted in the... Uh, in few big companies, it will certainly move uh, faster. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Akil Parikh from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, many congratulations on an uh, excellent set of numbers. So my first question is on the food and FMCG segment. Uh, if I look at last three years, right, uh, a contribution from FNF is in range of 23 to 25%. So uh, are there any specific challenges in FNF business where we couldn't get a sizable or scalable client the way we have done in paints, right? Like for example, Asian paints is like 25% of our total sales. Uh, is is, is it something that has to do with the industry or are, are there any specific challenges why we couldn't scale up uh, in FNF in the last three years? Oh, we are uh, growing rapidly in food and FMCC. Last year it was 52% growth and this quarter it is 54% Q1 on Q1. But anyway, this quarter is not a uh, correct quarter to judge because of the previous year's impact. But uh, in the, even the last 12 months ending uh, March, we ended up with 52% growth in the food and FMCC. One reason why the overall number look uh, only grown by around 25% uh, last year was the drop in our Q-pack sales, that is edible oil sales. 
it will in fact have come down considerably last year because that industry has faced tremendous price increase in their uh, basic material that is uh, crude oil palm oil or whatever they import and that has been really eased out in the last month so we see the edible oil companies which have discontinued our spare packs to save costs are coming back to the uh, back to our packs because uh, the looks of the pack and the branding has been established in the market but they are forced to withdraw because of pure cost considerations and now that the crude palm oil prices have fallen drastically uh, they are again looking back at our packs and i hope in this uh, festive season uh, the q pack numbers will shoot up uh, one good thing here to note is while our q pack numbers uh, for last full year it was around 40 crores sales uh, sorry 40 crore um, were contributed 85% by edible oil this year they are less than 35% so new applications of our square packs or q packs we call them are increasing let it be protein powder detergent or tea or recently cashew nuts and uh, various other food products even sweets uh, they are adopting uh, even some of the agro products uh, new trends micro new trends aquaculture uh, food that is getting packed in our square packs because they give excellent tamper evident feature and a very easy to remove pack at the same time excellent tamper evidence so some many other applications are entered uh, out of this uh, uh, current year uh, in the first quarter though we did around 10 crores out of that almost 7 and 8 crores is from other applications uh, than edible oil earlier edible oil used to be 75% other applications are hardly 20% so more and more products are adopting our q packs and once edible oil industry stabilizes this number also can shoot up then the overall food and q pack together uh, will be sizable uh, better than 24 23 which is now currently uh, the both of them put together are around 25% uh, they can even go up to 30% but again i want to remind you our other segments like paint are also growing rapidly if it is stagnated or growing only at 8 to 10% uh, the growth would have been uh, considerable in uh, food and fmcg in the overall pie but last year the paint and uh, in the paint we have grown by 34% so that base is also increasing that is why the as a percentage food and fmcg still looks around 24 25% but the ba- basic number is also growing Like what's the point? My question was more from you know like is the scope for further improvement in EBITDA per kg because you know given that FNF is almost eighty to ninety rupees per kg, uh, uh, so that can happen only obviously over food and FNF. So the contribution can probably move from say twenty five percent to say thirty or thirty five percent. Agreed. I agree with you. The EBITDA margins will improve faster if uh, food and FNF is or tomorrow our uh, IBM, especially pharma IBM sales start picking up. So would you be able Faster to uh, other segments what is so would you be able to uh, uh, mention our top five clients and probably uh, what roughly they contribute to our total sale yeah top five clients contribute almost 60 to 65 or even 70 percent of our sales uh, 65 you can say uh, asian paints is the number one uh, and then we have uh, castrol uh, we have uh, Hudson, that is uh, Arun ice cream. Amul may not be in the fifth; it may be sixth or seventh. And then uh, we have uh, Cadbury, Hindustan Liver. Sorry, Hindustan Liver would be the second because now our relation with Hindustan Liver has increased in many products, and we are adding actually some more products in this year. Hindustan Liver will be our number two uh, client, and followed by Castrol, Cadbury, Amul, Hudson. and iml non iml uh, volume value contribution for the quarter see iml as i told in the last quarter also now it is more or less stagnating iml and hcl together we are around 66% which was 63% in the q1 last year and last year full 12 months it was 65.28 so it is more or less at same level unless a major shift happens in uh, paint companies uh, uh, in our country uh this number will now stagnate around maybe 65 can at the most can grow up to 17 next couple of years uh, but again we are adding ivm products which are non iml as of today so 
that uh, will stagnate somewhere around 65 to 70 percent is my guess unless a major shift is taken by a company like asian paints or uh, who contribute sizable to our sales this number can cannot move much so 66 percent in value term right yeah 66 percent in value term 61.8 in uh, quantity oh, no. So last question on the uh, CAPEX, right? We have what, 250 crore of CAPEX lineup for next two years. Uh, at peak utilization, how much of uh, sales uh, this uh, total CAPEX can, uh, of capacity can be uh, delivered? See, as of today, as I said, from 44,000 tons, we are coming to 54,000 tons. Uh, but the next growth of another 125 crores investment can take it beyond 70 crores, 70,000 tons is my guess. Because uh, this time we are investing again on tool room and the label uh, manufacturing, more than 25 crores are that, uh, which will be non, uh, not directly contributing towards the capacity, indirectly though it is contributing. So next 125 crores can add another 15 to 16,000 tons. So probably from 54, uh, we may hit 70,000 tons. From sales perspective, how much of sales? Sorry? I was asking from a sales perspective, how much of sales we can clock from 54,000 tons and, uh, and at 70,000? Yeah, see, sales means our average sale price today is around 230 rupees per kg. So even if you take at the same uh, 230, uh, the capacity at 70,000 tons will be something around 1,600 uh, crores, but assuming 80% uh, max capacity, up to 1,200 to 1,250 crores turnover is possible. Got it. Got it. Thanks a lot and uh, best luck for uh, coming to Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Karan Batalia from Masek. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, like you mentioned last time that we started to supply <coughs> our dispensing pumps to, to Himalaya brand. So how are things shipping out there? No, not much is going to Himalaya. They were still asking some changes and adopting the new pack design they are coming out with. So the volumes are uh, now not much. Well, our main suppliers are going to Bipro and another four or five cosmetic companies uh, in Bombay and uh, neighboring areas. Right. And so what kind of capacity expansion are, are we looking at, you know, uh, for the Asian paint plants in Mysore and Vaisag? Uh, Mysore and Vaisag, we are expanding from around 3,500 tons. Uh, once again, let me check. To around, already we have expanded in the last uh, uh, year and uh, kept uh, 5,400 tons per annum at uh, Vajag and 4,000 at Mysore and 4,800 at uh, uh, Vajag. This will be again added probably to 6,300 and 6,000 respectively by end of this year or probably in our August, September itself. Some more missions are arriving. This is a brownfield expansion. We'll be adding only machinery, not even molds, not even land and building. Building was already built last year to ex uh, accommodate this expansion. And uh, molds and other uh, paraphernalia are already there. So these two expansions will go on by August itself. Right, right, right. And any, any update on the shippers? Thank you, Dr. Kumar. On what? On shippers. Shippers. Sipper, Sipper, S I W P E R. Oh, Sippers. No, the Sippers we are now bringing in some couple of them, but no, none of the major brands have given their approval. So we are also waiting on the wings. The moment uh, any of these sub brands are interested, we want to launch that. Nice. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Last question is from the line of Namish Gupta. An individual investor, please go ahead. Mr. Namish, please go ahead with your question.
Mr. Namish? Please go ahead with this. Okay. Audible? Yes. Yeah. So I just want to understand our products. I do not want, I don't have any question. So what is this IBM, EBM and EML? Actually, I have tried to understand but couldn't get, sir. So if you can just uh, um, guide me in a layman, uh, like how, what are, uh, what is the broader difference in these things? Yeah, see, injection molding is a process where containers without neck, that is a big container like a paint container or a restaurant pack, these are all made of injection molding process. There, the mold cost is very high. For example, a 20 liter mold cost for jar and cap will be more than one crore, the mold itself. So once the mold is made, you can only make that shape. You can't make any other shape. So investment in injection molding is very high, but you get very good accuracy. Coming to EBM, that is extrusion blow molding, all your shampoo bottles, all your uh, liquid uh, edible oil packs of one liter and two liter where you have a handle and you have a small neck, these are all made of extrusion blow molding. Here the mold cost is very low, like say five to 10 lakhs. And uh, the dimensional accuracy is also very pretty low. But you get different shapes, variety of shapes you can make in that. So products like shampoos and edible oil where uh, more than dimensional accuracy and uh, finish, they look at economics. So they go for uh, extrusion blow molding. The technology between injection molding and EBM is called IBM. That is injection blow molding. In this, the neck part is made of uh, <coughs> injection molding, and uh, the body part is blown by blow molding process. So the technology is in between I IM and uh, EBM. It gives both the advantages, accuracy of the neck for uh, good capping and uh, tamper evidence, and lightweight of blow molding because it is blown into a kind of a balloon, the body of the bottle is lighter than a container. So you get the advantage of EBM and also advance of IM. That's why most of the, but there is a limitation. You can't make this beyond one liter size. Uh, less than half liter is more typical, maximum one liter. So 100 gram, 50 gram, 200 gram, 300 gram, 600 gram, tablet containers, paste, some Vaseline, uh, cosmetics, all these kind of products are used in IBM technology because there you want a good finish, you want accurate uh, capping, and also average pricing. Uh, so that is where IBM comes in. So cosmetics, food and FMCG, and products of pharmaceutical tablets and uh, powders, they all adopt uh, IBM technology. That is where our company is entering. We are leaders in injection molding for the last 30 years, and today we are entering into IBM. And EBM is little phasing out of this kind of products because of its uh, not so good looks and very bad dimensional accuracy. So EBM is still there for bigger containers of one liter oil, two liter oil, or some of the shampoo bottles are still in uh, EBM. They continue to be in EBM uh, because beyond uh, half liter or 0.8 liter, uh, IBM technology is not still available. So anything above 0.8 liter or one liter, uh, they still have to go with uh, EBM technology. That is briefly the three varieties of packaging. Okay, and so one more thing, and what is this IML label? IML label, that is in-mold label. IML means in-mold label. That is a label made pre-manufactured, and by robotics, the label is kept inside the mold by a robot. And then, uh, molten plastic in a liquid form goes into the mold and it fuses the label to the body and when the bottle is, or the, when the container is taken out, the label is already fused, so the decoration is completed. So there is no need to do any post-operation like stickering or printing on the container. So that is the most advanced technology using robots. Uh, we are the first people to bring it to India uh, more than 10 years ago. Okay, so I mean, I mean, you mean to say, I mean, once you have done this IML label, the manufacturer just has to, I mean, I mean, fuse their material in it and nothing else, no stickering, nothing else, correct? 
nothing nothing okay okay but it looks Thank permanently stuck stuck to that and it looks multi color printing of world class uh, finish okay and sir uh, this i mean this qr coding can be done in iml and ibm both or just in iml no no it is done only on iml iml can be used in ibm also so the technology okay, is on the iml itself not on the bottle okay 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 welcome thank you sir thank you thank you as there are no further questions we have reached the end of question and answer session i would now like to hand this over to the management for closing comments uh thanks uh, uh, everybody for participating in the conference and making successful thanks to naval bang in particular uh, thanks abhishek and thanks uh, coordinators for your patience thank you very much have a good day bye thank you on behalf of nirmal bang equities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines